Update 8.0 is on the horizon. It is finally on the way. We are about to have it officially released in the game, and we have everything from super weapons to the anti-tank gun rework. We have a lot to unpack, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. Before we do, though, if there is anything specific about this update that you guys want to focus in on specifically, down in the description of the video are going to be the timestamps, so you guys are going to be able to jump to a specific section that you guys are more interested in watching. If you guys are enjoying videos like this on the channel and want to see more of them, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Both of those things help the channel out tremendously. If you guys have access to Discord and are not already in our community Discord server, the link to that is going to be in the description of the video below. Click on that link. It'll take you right into the community Discord server. Absolutely, everybody is welcome. We'd love to have you. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into everything 8.0 related. Welcome back, guys. Again, as we jump into this thing, we have got a whole lot of information here to talk about and unpack. We're going to go into it in detail, so it is going to be a longer video. But just a reminder, if you guys want to jump to a specific part of the video, the timestamps for everything are going to be in the description of the video below so you guys can check out what you are specifically interested in. All right, guys, first thing on the list are going to be the new Titan and Sky Fortress buildings. I'm going to be reading the full breakdown of the dev notes here off to the side uh, so that way we can get you guys all of the information. So again, it is going to be a little bit longer of a video, but want to make sure that we get you guys all of the latest and greatest information. So starting off the new map building Titans, Titans are a special defensive structure you can build on your alliance's villages. After a Titan is built, it will protect all bases within range of the village, preventing them from being attacked by enemy commanders. If the village where a Titan is located becomes invalid, the Titan will no longer be able to protect nearby bases. If you leave your alliance or move your base via command truck, you will be unable to receive Titan protection for the next 30 minutes. This debuff will be dispelled if your base is destroyed during the 30 minutes. Titans in combat. Titans cannot be directly attacked by ground or air force troops. They can only be attacked via a Sky Fortress rally. You and your alliance members can garrison troops in a Titan. When a Titan is attacked by a Sky Fortress, its garrison troops will launch counterattacks. Each commander can only have one troop garrisoned in a Titan. Garrison troops will not take damage in Titan battles. Only the Titan itself will be attacked. During a Titan battle, Alliance members can deploy scout planes to repair the Titan's HP. If a Titan's HP is reduced to zero due to combat, it will turn back into a village. In regards to building Titans, your Alliance leader, officers, or security chiefs can build Titans on Alliance villages. Titans cannot be built on villages that are being repaired, burning, invalid, or have ongoing or paused construction. Each commander can only build one Titan for their alliance, along with one additional Titan in Theater of Conquest. Each alliance can own up to five Titans in its city, and another five Titans in the Theater of Conquest. It costs super alloys to build Titans. A Titan will start with 5% HP after it is built, after that, Alliance members can deploy scout planes to repair the Titan HP by 5% each time. Repairing Titans cost super alloys. So I think the most interesting takeaway outside of the actual Titans themselves is the fact that you can do repairing and contributing HP to these Titans via your scout planes, which are also directly tied to your airport base building. A lot of people have not fully maxed out their Air Force base building, understandably so, until this update, the Air Force base building or the Air port didn't really do a whole lot for you. It was the hangers on your airport that are actually the most important. However, with this update, it begs the question, is the bill is the airport itself actually going to be more important as a building now with these scout planes becoming viable again? Obviously, time will tell, but wouldn't be a bad idea to consider going ahead and maxing it out since it isn't that expensive of, of a building to begin with. And it also is probably going to increase the flight time of your scout planes to these Titans. So that way you are able to contribute HP to them at a faster rate. Moving on to the Sky Fortresses, which are a direct counter to the Titans. It says using Sky Fortresses, you can use Sky Fortresses to rally attack Titans, the bases of other commanders and Raven Fortresses. You need to set a preparation period when initiating a Sky Fortress rally. 
When the preparation period has ended, your Sky Fortress will wait for all participating troops and scout planes used to repair the Sky Fortress to arrive before departing to attack the target. After your Sky Fortress has departed, it will automatically start marching towards the target. It cannot be manually controlled. Your Sky Fortress will start attacking the rally target once it arrives. During the battle, participating troops will attack the target from within the Sky Fortress and will not take damage. Only the Sky Fortress itself will take damage. Sky Fortresses cannot be attacked by troops on the map. It can only be attacked by the target it is attacking and troops garrisoned in that target. After your Sky Fortress destroys its target or is destroyed, the battle will end. It will then carry the rally troops back to your base. After your Sky Fortress returns to your base, the rally will end. All participating troops will return to their respective bases. So it begs the question, this is obviously going to add a very strategic element to the game, especially in Theater of Conquest events. So this is going to create a new dynamic in terms of contributing rallies to actual army groups versus trying to contribute them to Sky Fortresses and Titans. So there's going to be a lot of different mix up here in regards to the strategy and the flow of armies army groups and units in general, so it may change the entire dynamic of Warpath as we know it. Now let's talk about Sky Fortress Rallies, which to summarize it, it is basically a version of an army group. They operate and they run just similar to army groups. Obviously, there is a different aspect to it, but it is very similar in terms of sending troops and receiving troops, things like that, to a traditional army group. To start a Sky Fortress Rally, you must first select a target. As the Rally's initiator, you must use Super Alloys to build the Sky Fortress and deploy one troop to join the rally. After a rally is initiated, Alliance members can deploy their troops to the rally initiator's base to join their rally. Each member can only deploy one troop to each rally. A quick side note, and of course we will be able to better understand and tell once this gets updated on the actual live aspect of the game, but it's going to be interesting to see what, what troops specifically or what troop types specifically are the most viable in terms of contributing to these Sky Fortress rallies. Is it going to be tanks? Is it going to be uh, artillery units? Is it going to be anti-tank guns? We don't know yet, but we will certainly wait and find out. Continuing down the list, when rallying against a Titan or Raven Fortress, the default capacity of Sky Fortress rallies is five troops. You can increase the capacity of rallies you initiate by upgrading your combat hub and research rally techs. When rallying against a base belonging to another commander, the capacity of Sky Fortress rallies is fixed at five troops. So if targeting an enemy base, your Sky Fortress can have no more than five friendly Alliance member troops inside of it at any given time. If you are attacking a Titan, your Alliance territory must be adjacent to the target Titan's village to initiate a rally against it. If you are attacking a base that is within its Alliance territory, your Alliance territory must still be adjacent to the base's village. Sky Fortress HP. The max HP of a Sky Fortress is determined by the Rally Initiator's combat hub level rally techs, and the all-time highest star level of their units. When rallying against Titans, the max HP of a Sky Fortress will be its normal value, and its starting HP will be 5% of its max HP. When rallying against bases, its max HP will be 1% of its normal value, and its starting HP will be 5% of its max HP. When rallying against Raven Fortresses, its max HP will be 5% of its normal value, and its starting HP will be 100% of its max HP. When a Sky Fortress is rallying against a Titan, Alliance members can deploy scout planes to repair the Sky Fortress's HP. Each repair will heal the Sky Fortress for 5% of its HP. When a Sky Fortress is rallying against a base, its HP cannot be repaired after it is departed. When a Sky Fortress is rallying against a Raven Fortress, its HP cannot be repaired at any time. It costs Super Alloy to repair a Sky Fortress's HP. And here you guys can see some of the attributes and a quick breakdown here of the Sky Fortress and its HP from different increments. So it says the max HP of your Sky Fortress is determined by the all-time highest star level of your units. Your current Sky Fortress max HP bonus is 50. The max HP of a Sky Fortress changes according to its target. The max HP of your Sky Fortress when rallying against different targets is as follows. Enemy Titans, 90.6 billion. Enemy Bases, 906 million. Raven Fortresses, 4.53 billion. The rally capacity of a Sky Fortress changes according as well to its target. 
The rally capacity of your Sky Fortress against different targets is as follows. Against enemy Titans and Raven Fortresses, you can have 15 units inside of your Sky Fortress. And against enemy bases, no more than five units. It is a fixed number. We have also now got the introduction of new Raven Fortresses. Raven Fortresses, important strongholds for Raven troops, will appear at random locations across the map. So just like traditional bunkers, Raven Fortresses at different levels will spawn all across the map at randomly different generated locations. Raven Fortresses are so strong that normal troops can hardly deal any damage to it. You need to initiate a rally with your allies and attack them using a Sky Fortress. You can dispatch a troop to a Sky Fortress rally and aid in its assault. Only Sky Fortresses can deal effective damage to Raven Fortresses. You will earn abundant rewards after destroying a Raven Fortress. So to summarize the Raven Fortress, it is going to be kind of that next level of Raven Bunker. It is apparently going to be giving us better and more generous rewards from the completion of killing the Raven Fortresses. And it is also going to aid as an opportunity for people to practice with their Sky Fortress forming rallies and utilizing these Sky Fortresses in general. So my advice to all of you guys out there is definitely if you are in a situation and have the opportunity to practice these rallies, I would definitely say do so back in your level three cities. And that way you guys are practiced with it, well versed in it once you guys transition into the Theater of Conquest events. Moving on to the next thing in our list, we have now got a new Alliance member level. So up to this point, we are all familiar with R5, R4, R3, R2, R1, and then R0. But now we have a new Security Chief member level. Here's what the Security Chief members can do. Your Alliance leader, officers or security chiefs can build titans. Your alliance leader and officers can appoint or dismiss security chiefs. Your alliance can appoint up to 10 security chiefs at a time. Your alliance can own up to five titans across all cities at a time. And your alliance can own five additional titans on the Theater of Conquest map. These titans are independent of those owned by your alliance in other cities. So just like the progression that we are all used to, and maybe some if you guys are on newer servers are still actually going through as we watch this video but level one two and three cities you are allotted a total of five central command centers that you can place in any of the cities of your choosing but you guys get additional separate central command buildings when you guys are in a theater of conquest event same idea same concept here with these sky fortresses and things like that they are going to have five total for your level one through three cities that will match the same amount of central command centers that you've got and then you're going to have five additional that you can use and operate in your Theater of Conquest events. We've got a new statistic that is going to be coming on battle reports. You guys can see the battle points section over here. When eliminating enemy units, you'll earn battle points based on the enemy unit's power grade. You can also earn battle points by helping to reduce the HP of an enemy Sky Fortress or Titan. If a Sky Fortress is damaged by a base, all the battle points will be granted to the base's commander. If a Titan is damaged by a Sky Fortress, the battle points will be distributed between all of the commanders participating in the Sky Fortress rally based on how much of the Sky Fortress's HP they've repaired. If a Sky Fortress is damaged by a Titan, the battle points will be distributed between all commanders defending the Titan based on how much of the Titan's HP they've repaired. You guys can see here at the bottom of the battle points uh, description, it says help reduce the HP of a Sky Fortress slash Titan by 0.1%, you guys are gonna get 3,600 battle points. We have also got a brand new base building coming with the 8.0 update, and that is going to be the Combat Hub. After building a Combat Hub, you will be able to obtain and launch Sky Fortresses, join Sky Fortress rallies, and garrison Titans. Upgrading your Combat Hub will give you the ability to build Titans and increase the troop capacity of your Sky Fortress and Titans. From the Combat Hub, you can also view attributes of your Sky Fortress and Titans and this is where we could do so. So once you click on the combat hub, you're going to be able to click and switch between your Sky Fortress and your Titans. These are different styles with different attributes. We're going to get into those. Those are of course going to have to be obtained through in-game purchases, um, at least as of the moment and to my knowledge, but you guys are going to be able to flip and flop between the basic Sky Fortress and the basic Titan, you guys are gonna be able to see all of the statistics and all of the attributes uh, down here for each respective building. In addition to the Combat Hub, we have another brand new building called the Super Alloy Foundry. In the Super Alloy Foundry, you can use steel to produce super alloys, which are used in Sky Fortress combat. Upgrading your Super Alloy Foundry will increase its production speed 
and queue size. So similar to the actual engineering center that we all know and that is in the game, as soon as you actually begin the game that can produce wood, bricks, cement, everything else, this is gonna be very similar, except this is going to produce a new kind of material. But the higher you upgrade it, the more you can produce and the faster you can produce it. We can also forge super alloy components here in the super alloy foundry. The super alloy foundry can also be used to forge super alloys into super alloy components, which are used to research rally techs. The higher your super alloy foundries level, the more super alloy components you can forge in a day. Once you've forged enough super alloy components to research all techs in your current rally tech tree, the forging feature will be disabled until you unlock the next rally tree. Now to discuss the new tech trees, the rally tech trees that a lot of you guys are probably very curious about and probably quite a bit stressed out about. We have two brand new tech trees in the 8.0 update. We've got the rally tech tree and the advanced rally tech tree. We are going to take a deep dive into both of them. We are going to discuss what is involved and what you are going to need to actually upgrade these respective tech trees. Researching rally techs requires super alloy components for forged in the super alloy foundry and a small number of other resources. Advanced rally techs can be unlocked once your server has been online for 75 days. You must first fully research all basic rally techs to unlock the advanced rally tech tree. So similar to the military and the advanced combat and ultimately the modern war combat tech trees, these rally tech trees are going to operate in a very similar fashion. So the basic rally tech tree is going to be kind of a general tech tree for everything regarding the rallies, the super fortresses, the titans. It is going to increase uh, damage resist of fortresses, of titans as you go through here, HP of both of them. Um, it is going to basically be a kind of all-encompassing tech tree, if you will. Jumping over to the advanced rally tech tree, this is where you can get a little bit more specific and geared towards what you're actually wanting to focus on. You can focus on either Super Fortress tech or Titan tech specifically, or of course you can ping pong back and forth between the two. Um, I probably wouldn't advise it. I would pick the one that makes the most sense for you and probably commit to that just like any other tech within the game. There's a new way to view all of the buffs that you are currently benefiting from. Prior to the 8.0 update here in the top left hand side of the of the screen you would be able to click on that and you could scroll down and see a list of all of the buffs that you currently had in effect now there is a new and improved way to see all the buffs that you are currently getting benefits from to get an overview of the buffs all you simply have to do is click on your command center click on the buffs button and this will give you a breakdown an in-depth breakdown of all of the buffs and how you were benefiting from them each individually next up on our list that we are covering for the 8.0 update is going to be the much anticipated anti-tank gun AA mode. This is something that has been highly requested by the community, including myself for a very, very long time, and it is finally here, and we are going to take a look at everything that is involved with it. I do plan on doing some actual in-depth anti-tank gun AA mode testing, so definitely stay tuned for that. It's going to be obviously in a separate video. I want to respect your guys' time here today and stay focused on everything involved in this update specifically but this is able to go into AA mode in the open field. So there are some additional changes outside of AA mode we're gonna talk about in just a minute. So stick around for that, but I did predict this quite a while ago, and that is that ATG army groups are going to become a thing and it's gonna make more sense here in just a moment, but I stand by what I said, and this is going to add definitely a new dynamic in terms of being able to potentially cover artillery in the open field and being able to really dole out a lot more damage to these enemy fighters and bombers. So it is most definitely going to change the strategic element of this game. Before we actually show you guys and preview the AA mode on the actual ATG, there is something that is even more important to note, and that is that the ATG now has a default grid range, firing range of four grids. Previously, it was three grids. So even with say an Antonina or a Lady Liberty officer on it, it would get up to four grids max. Now it is a default to four grids, which means that with an officer that offers an extra grid of firing range, it is now going to have a full five grid range in the open field, which is why I predicted that the ATG army groups would become viable. That is also another reason why you guys should subscribe to the channel if you're not already, because we do a lot of these early update access reviews. We talk about them. I give you guys my predictions and more times than not, I like to think that I am on the right track. So if you guys want to stay up to date with everything related to Warpath on this channel, hit the subscribe button. It helps out the channel tremendously, and we will make sure we keep giving you guys all of the latest and greatest Warpath news and updates. So now to actually go into AA mode on 
on the actual anti-tank gun. So when you deploy it into the open field, you click on it and then you switch into AA mode. Once it actually goes into AA mode, it is no longer allowed to move. So I can drag it anywhere I want and it is not going to move while in AA mode. So if I wanted to move or I wanted to redeploy it in a new location, I would simply need to click ground drag it to my desired location. And then once it reaches that location, then I can of course immediately click on it and switch it back into AA mode. Something to note though, that five star and above anti-tank guns can now switch to AA mode, which allows them to automatically attack enemy air force troops within range. So anything that is a four or 4.1 star is not going to have the AA mode capability, but once you get it to a five star and above, it will have the AA mode capability. We've also got some changes to the fortified wall HP. So in version 8.0, we will be increasing the amount of HP added to your base's fortified wall. The specific changes are as follows. From level one to 10, each upgrade will add 1.5 million HP previously 500k. From level 11 through 50, each upgrade will add 1 million HP, previously 500k. Upgrades from level 51 onwards will remain unchanged. Each level will add 500k HP. So guys, that might not seem like a lot. Maybe it does seem like a lot, but that is a pretty significant change. That is going to add a lot more beef to your base, especially when you've got, when you're talking about bases with, uh, you know, highly upgraded fortified walls, that is going to make the importance of artillery and these base damage focused units a whole, whole, whole heck of a lot more important. So definitely be aware of that, be on the lookout for that and how that kind of changes the, the strategic element of the battlefield, if you will. Naturally, of course, it would not be a Warpath update without the addition of a brand new officer. The new officer, Svelin, I'm sure I am butchering that hardcore, but that's the best I got, is going to be a brand new ground force officer, a tank officer specifically. And for everybody that has been hating on me for saying that the super heavy is going to become relevant again at some point, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, but I at least get a little chuckle here because to unlock this new officer, your server has to be open for at least 300 days and you have to have a 8.0 star super heavy. Not previously had it, you have to actively currently have it. So for everybody that has made fun of me for holding onto my super heavy while you have disbanded yours, I am going to get the last laugh, at least for the moment, because I still have my super heavy, which means that I can still unlock this unit while you can. Now let's go ahead and jump into the skills. We are going to start with the first skill, the tactical skill. Grants their troop a shield. Shield coefficient is 1500 for four seconds. If this officer is in a tank or helicopter troop, the shield's shield coefficient is increased by 25%. Skill two increases the damage resist of this officer's tank and helicopter by 20%. Skill three increases the HP of this officer's tank and helicopter by 40%. Skill four, this officer's troop deals 30% extra normal attack damage. And then skill five, once fully awakened, whenever the HP of this officer's tank or helicopter troop drops below 20% in combat, it gains 50% damage resist for 10 seconds. If this officer is in a super heavy tank, this skill grants an extra 30% damage resist. This skill can only be triggered once per battle. And now you guys can probably see why it is only available once you have a 8.0 or greater super heavy tank as it does have some super heavy specific attributes. This officer is geared more towards protection, durability, survivability, which makes sense naturally being on a super heavy as the super heavy is generally what we tank bases with. So with that being said, this is going to introduce a new, um, not only officer naturally, but also a new dynamic to the battlefield. So are super heavies really coming back or are they not? Let me know what you guys think. I personally think that they will make a comeback, but I could be wrong. It wouldn't be the first time and it won't be the last time, but that's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So that is going to wrap us up here for all of the big fundamental changes. We are going to talk now about some of the further optimizations, some still pretty significant changes to the game, but we are going to talk about those and detail what that could mean for the game in general. Number one on further optimization is the burn speed of normal villages has been increased by 50%. To be truthfully honest, I'm not entirely sure why they did that and why they implemented that. Um, I don't recall ever seeing really any community suggestions about increasing the village burn time, especially with the Alliance buff that reduces, um, or I'm sorry, that actually increases the village burn time. Um, but the standard burn time, I believe, is around 45 minutes. So I'm not sure why they would increase that. That's still a pretty significant amount of time. 
uh, and a lot of times in a lot of situations to sit there and have to babysit those burning villages the whole time. So to add even more time onto that um, doesn't make a whole heck of a lot of sense to me. Maybe there is a reason behind it. It is definitely going to slow the burn and build progression of the game down. So we'll see how that ultimately impacts things like the Theater of Conquest event, but of course, time will tell. Number two on further optimizations, when starting the Paratrooper Invasion event, all Alliance members will receive a message indicating which member initiated the event. So whichever officer actually starts the event, there is going to be a mail sent out to um, signify who actually began the event. Optimizes the visuals and flow of drawing prizes. That's kind of an open-ended one, but I'm sure it may be a smaller detail that we might catch on or maybe we won't, um, you know, kind of down the road once we get into some newer events that take place after the update does go live. Number four is going to be map buildings can now be constructed in villages that are undergoing construction slash have paused construction. This is really only going to be applicable to the Cairo Theater of Conquest event, at least as of the moment at the time of making this video, the Cairo Theater of Conquest is the only place that you are actually going to be able to construct actual map buildings, i.e. the Scorpion Cannon, Antlion Launcher, things like that. So now you can actually deploy and build those um, when the building is still under construction. Not sure though if that is going to be the case if it's say an enemy an enemy uh, alliance that is actually building a village but it is still under construction. Let's say there's a couple of bases in there and more bases are on the way but have not arrived yet. Can you theoretically go start to build your scorpion cannons let's say in the open areas of that village and stop the other people from deploying their bases to help speed up that build time. We don't know. Prior to this update, it was you only had the ability to build uh, buildings, map buildings in your active alliance territory, uh, but now you can build them in villages that are being constructed, which until the construction is complete, they're technically not owned by anybody because they can be stopped or canceled. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see for that. But definitely could be a pretty significant change, especially in regards to the actual Cairo Theater of Conquest map. They have added levels to all strategic places to help you better understand the relative importance of each strategic place and to help you plan your conquest of your city. Improved the experience of tapping buttons, which will solve the issue some commanders were having when tapping buttons and didn't seem to do anything. They have added information about how to migrate to the supplies page, resource page, and a number of other pages. Turning on the show building name setting and options will now also show the name of the bulletin board building. Unused slot coins and points for the golden slots event will now be converted into rush items at the end of every golden slot event. So that is going to kind of conclude all of the detailed information within the actual 8.0 update. For those of you that have decided to stick around all the way to this point, this is going to be a secret little benefit or bonus, if you will, at the end of this video. We are going to talk about some of the new unit skins that are in the game coming with this update. We are going to show the new base, uh, the new base uh, skin that is going to be in this update as well as some of the new aesthetic changes, for example, with the actual base deploy feature. We are going to show you that. So again, as a thank you and an added bonus to those of you who have taken the time to stick around this long in the video, we are going to give you guys a little extra value. So you guys can see now here on screen that the actual base grid outline of your um, base when you are going to try to fit it into a particular destination is a little bit cleaner. It looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and hopefully it will also help your base is packing tighter so more people can fit in and get involved on the front lines. Two of the most requested unit types in the game are finally getting unit skins. That is going to be the Liberty Tank Hunter slash Helicopter and the Vanguard Anti-Tank Gun. The Liberty Tank Hunter slash Helicopter is going to get the unit skin named Ocean. It is going to be an elite level unit skin and it is going to increase the firepower of the unit by 5%. You guys can see the classic version of the skin here as well as the modern helicopter version here. So not a bad looking skin at all. And again, it is going to add 5% to your unit's firepower. The Fallen Leaves anti-tank gun unit skin is going to increase the firepower by 5%. Again, it is a elite level unit skin. So you guys can see the classic version here on screen as well as the modern version here. So I actually like this. This looks like a, a pretty realistic, uh, you know, unit skin slash camouflage. So I'm all about it. The increase in anti-tank gun firepower uh, by 5% is also going to be great as well. So that is something you guys are going to be able to obtain. Along with those new unit skins, we are getting a new base skin that is going to be Snow Temple. It is an epic level base skin. It is going to increase artillery firepower 
by 5% and it is going to increase the HP of all of your units by an additional 5% as well. So pretty cool uh, base scan there. So that will probably be obtainable through the Percy showroom event as most of our unit skins now are. Also, there are a few new additions to the actual Percy showroom event itself. The Percy showroom event is not live on the test server here. So unfortunately, I can't show you but there are a couple of changes coming. Number one, you are now going to be able to acquire past unit skins that maybe you didn't have the ability or whatever the case may be to actually obtain. The first go around, they are going to be adding some of those unit skins back for you to get through the Percy showroom event, as well, of course, as ground attack effects and Air Force uh, attack effects that you may have not been able to obtain on the first go around. All right, guys, that is finally going to wrap us up for the 8.0 update. Again, I know it was long, lots of information to give you guys. This is going to be really pretty game changing here for Warpath. Um, no matter the stage of the game you're in, this is going to fundamentally change a lot of things within the game, how we play it, the strategic side of it. So I really, really appreciate all of you guys that did hang out with me for the entire length of the video. It is much appreciated. If you guys did find this video helpful, did find it valuable for you, uh, please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button as both of those things help the channel out tremendously. And again, just a reminder, if you are not already in our community Discord server and you do have access to Discord, the link to that is going to be in the description of the video below. Click on that link. It'll take you right into the community Discord server. We're closing in on a thousand members. We've got tons of amazing and helpful people over there, and we'd love to have you come join in on the fun with us. And with that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, and we'll catch you guys on the next video.